STL containers, there's a lot of them. Let's see how to choose the right one. If you are new to STL, you're probably wondering why there are so many containers in there and how to pick the right one. Well, as usual, it all depends on the use case, on what you want to achieve. First, let's learn what kind of containers are there anyway. STL containers are generally divided into two major groups sequence containers and associative containers. Well, there's a third small group called container adapters, but let's leave them out for this moment. So, what are sequence containers? Sequence containers are pretty much containers which store elements in a linear fashion. You've got your first element, then you've got your second one, third one, etc. On the other hand, associative containers are based on the key concept. Each element gets assigned a key. You don't have your first, second, third, fourth element. You've got your element with key value 1, you've got your element with key value 2, key value 3, etc. Let's focus on the first group. Within sequence containers, you've got containers like a vector, array, a list, a forward list, and a deck. So, how should you choose any one of them? Like I said before, it all depends on what you want to achieve. So let's assume you want to store elements one after another. Well, you can do it in a continuous memory like vector array does. You can use a node-based approach like a list or forward list does. Or you can try a hybrid approach like a deck does. Each of these approaches has its pros and cons. Each of them has its own use case. To find which one is perfect for you, you must ask yourself a couple of questions and it should give you pretty definitive answer on what you wish to choose. So the first question is, do you need continuous memory? By continuous memory we mean that if you have two elements, the second element is placed directly after the first element in memory. What does it give us in practice? You see, CPUs have this thing called a prefetcher. Prefetcher basically fetches some amount of memory right after the memory you wish to fetch in the first place. So if you access the first element in a container, the prefetcher will automatically fetch the second element for you because it thinks that you are most likely to touch that second element anyway. So continuous memory, in essence, gives you fast iteration. You can go through all the elements in a very fast way. The prefetcher will fetch the memory into high-speed cache on the CPU and your iteration will be extremely fast. But continuous memory has its drawbacks. When you insert element at the beginning and in the middle or even at the end of the container, the whole memory must be expanded, which essentially means the whole memory must be reallocated. And we all know memory allocation is really slow. So you have very fast access, very fast iteration, but you have very slow insertions. The same goes for removal. Fortunately, in the case of a standard vector, the policy is to grow the vector size when you do insertion by a larger amount than the number of elements you wish to insert. That gives a bit of performance boost in, in terms of inserting the elements and reallocating memory, but it costs more memory to allocate up front. All in all, it's a good trade-off. But then again, if you wish to do a lot of insertions and deletions, continuous memory might not be for you. But if you do find that you are iterating over the elements quite a lot, you should really consider a continuous memory container. Such containers are, like I said, a vector and an array. The difference between those two is a vector is dynamic, it can grow and shrink, while an array is static. It just tell the array up front how many elements you wish to store and that's it. You cannot do anything with it anymore. If you do not need fast iteration times but you wish to access an element in an arbitrary position also very fast, then you should really reconsider continuous memory. You see, continuous memory has this property then in order to access an element at some position n, you just take the address of the first element and add n elements to it. So pretty much the access time for element at any position is constant. It is very fast. So if you don't need fast iteration, but need fast access to element at 
at an arbitrary position, that's important, you should really reconsider continuous memory containers. If you do not need fast iteration or don't need uh, fast random element access, you should think about insertions and removals. Do you plan on doing a lot of insertions or removals? And at what positions? Like I said before, insertions in a continuous memory container like a vector can be really slow. Therefore, we have another type of container, a node-based container, like a list, forward list, or a deck. If you plan to insert elements at the beginning or at the end of the container, you should consider a deck. A deck is uh, short for double-ended queue. Like the name suggests, it is a queue and it is optimized for insertions or removal at the beginning or at the end of the container. But if you wish to insert or remove element at any position inside and do it really fast, you should consider a list. A list is a doubly linked list, which you probably know from data structure classes or whatever, and it supports a very fast insertion or deletion at any position because it just inserts or deletes a random node. But when in order to insert or delete an, an element, let's say in the middle of the list, you need to first find the node which is before. Therefore, you need to iterate all, over all the nodes which will take a linear time and you should take that into account. So, let's recap. If you want fast insertions and deletions at the beginning or in the end, consider using a deck. If you wish to insert or remove elements at arbitrary position, use the list. And there's a variation of the list called a forward list. A forward list is essentially a list, but not a double linked list, but a single linked list. Which pretty much means that you can do fast insertions and deletions at only one end and everything else will be, you know, slow. Small note about node-based containers. Because they store elements in non-continuous memory, the prefetcher really cannot fetch the next element, which means you will need to do a lot of memory accesses. The CPU would need to do a lot of memory accesses, which are pretty much slow. So you should really not do a lot of iterations over the whole collection if you are using lists or pretty much any node base containers. So let's make a small recap about sequence containers. You have a vector which stores its elements in a continuous memory, therefore it has fast random element access, fast iteration times, but slow insertions and removals. You have an array which too stores elements in a continuous memory, but is static, it cannot grow, it cannot shrink. And then you have your node base containers, like a deck, which is optimized for fast insertions and removals at the beginning or at the end, but is potentially slow at iterating over all the elements. And then you have a list and a forward list, which uh, do insertions really fast, but are really slow at iteration or random element access. Since you need to scroll through all the nodes to find the element you're looking for. Now let's talk about associative containers. Like I said, these containers are not based on the position of elements, but on the keys assigned to elements. These are divided into two major groups, an ordered or sorted containers and unordered containers. Let's talk about sorted containers first. An example of such containers are map and multimap. These containers map a key to a value. So each element, each value has a key assigned to it. The type of that key is pretty much irrelevant. It can be an integer, it can be a string, whatever you wish. The difference between those two is that a map can store one element per one key, when a multimap can store multiple elements per one key. So why do we call them sorted? Because the order of the elements appearing in the map or multimap is defined by the value of the key. The keys which are less than the keys around them are brought in front of the others. By default, a standard operator less is used to check which uh, keys are compared less to the other one. This is called establishing equivalence. Uh, the technical terms or technical definitions might be irrelevant for you at this moment. You just need to remember that keys they are less than other keys came in front and the keys which are greater go at the back. So if you wish to store elements based on keys, if you are doing a key value mapping and you need 
those keys to be sorted, consider using a map or a multimap. On the other hand, we have unsorted variation of the map or and the multimap, called an unordered map and an ordered multimap. The key difference between those two is, as you can guess, they are unordered. The position of the elements or the keys is pretty much arbitrary, you cannot guarantee anything about it. How does it know where to store the keys? Another associative containers are based on something called a hash. A hash is a numerical value assigned to a key. There are some algorithms which compute hashes from many things like strings, like numbers, floating point numbers, etc, etc. The key thing is, a key gets its hash computed and based on this hash value it is inserted in some arbitrary position in the container. So why should you use an unordered container instead of a sorted one? Because unordered containers are really fast when doing lookups. Sorted containers are usually implemented in terms of trees and trees have a logarithmic lookup time. In case of unordered containers, it all depends on the hash function but we can assume the access time it gets pretty close to constant. Well, that's not fully true because there are other factors like collisions, like the complexity of the hash function itself. So if you have a very complex hash functions, you have a lot of hash collisions in the containers, the access time may be really slow but you can generally assume access to an element in an unordered container can be and pretty much will be in most times faster than access times when using a sorted container. So if you need a sorted associative container, use a map or a multimap. If you need fast unsorted con associative container, use an unordered map or an unordered multimap. We also have two variations of associative containers called a set and a multiset, and also an ordered set and then an ordered multiset. While a map assigns a value for each key, a set only holds keys. That means you can make a container which holds unique elements, and each of those elements pretty much is the value you are looking for itself. The key is the value. For example, if you are building an application which uses users and you wish each user name to be unique, you can use a set or an unordered set to check if a given username was already used. You just insert the username into the set and the next time a new user tries to register, you just check his username with the set if it's there, if it's present, you just disallow that. So pretty much sets and unordered sets are used to store information about which elements, which keys were already used. Now what's the difference between those two? Like before, a set is sorted, it's based on the equivalence principle, it's based on the operator less, while an unordered set is based on hash values, and an unordered set might be faster than a set when doing lookups, but that's not necessary too. But in usual case, you can assume that an ordered set will be faster than you should prefer an ordered set when you don't care about the order of keys. When it comes to a multiset and an ordered multiset, the same principle applies as with, as with maps and multimaps. As a set can store a key just once, while a multiset can store many equivalent keys. So, to summarize, if you need a key value mapping, use a map or an ordered map. If you need this to be sorted, use a map. If you don't care about the order of elements, use an unordered map. If you wish to store many values per key, use a multi-map, otherwise use a plain map or an unordered map. But if you only have your keys, when keys are not assigned any values to them, use a set or a multi-set. If you don't care about ordering, use an unordered set or an ordered multiset. Lastly, we have things called container adapters. These are three little classes called a stack, a queue, and a priority queue. These classes pretty much encapsulate other containers inside them and provide a different interface. For example, a stack behaves like a stack, so you can push elements on top and pop elements from top and nothing else. How is it implemented inside? What container is it based on? It all depends on the template argument you passed. By default, it's usually a vector or 
something. So there you go. I hope you know how to choose your containers based on those few simple questions. If you like to learn more, click on the more modern C++ lessons. If you want to learn how to make different stuff, click on the how-tos. Subscribe and see you again later.